So this video will discuss problem number three. It was from the 2023 AP Calc A, B, and B, C exams, and it's the differential equations problem from 2023. So the situation is we've got a bottle of milk taken out of the refrigerator, placed in a pan of hot water to be warmed. The increasing function M models the temperature of the milk. M of T is measured in degrees Celsius. T is the number of minutes since the bottle was placed in the pan. M satisfies this differential equation. They tell us at time zero, we have the temperature of the milk being five degrees Celsius. And we also are given the fact that M of T is less than 40 for all values of T. They give us a slope field in part A, and they ask us to sketch the solution curve through the point zero comma five. So at the ordered pair zero comma five, you just wanna begin your graph there and just kind of use the slope to build your graph. Now it's not necessarily gonna be perfect, but you can't have any obvious uh, issues with the slope of the tangent line to the curve you're sketching into the slope field with what the slope field actually shows. So I wouldn't wanna have something like this happening, like at this point that we start at, I definitely wouldn't want a negative slope. I have a positive, segment for my slope field there. So as long as I'm using the, the slopes to kind of guide my graph, and I, in this case, have to pretty much level off and have a horizontal asymptote at that completely level stretch of the slope field, you should be good to go for part A. Part B asks us to do a tangent line approximation based at t equals zero to approximate m of two, and that would be the temperature of the milk at time two. So they, they give us the ordered pair 0, 5 in sentence form. Obviously, as an ordered pair, that would be at time 0. Uh, the temperature, M, is 5. We need to know the slope of our tangent line, so we need to evaluate our derivative at 0, 5. And the biggest fear I would have with my students for this problem would be if they put 0 in place of M rather than five in place of M. We're so used to building tangent lines whenever we plug something in place of the X or in place of the T that we have to kind of stop and, and slow down a little bit whenever we have variables taking on different roles than they're normally taking within our problem, or in this case, within our derivative. This derivative depends on the dependent variable which is the y coordinate five, the m coordinate five. So that's what I'm plugging into my derivative to generate my slope, leaving me with a slope of 35 fourths. I then build a point slope equation. You, in a problem like this, you're probably gonna be given a point for showing the equation of your tangent line. So writing it out, doesn't have to be in point slope form, could be in slope intercept form or any form for the equation of a line, but having the equation of the line is definitely gonna be something you wanna do. And actually, I realized something that I don't like. I'm going to pause the video, make an adjustment, and we'll talk about what I didn't like. So previously, I had a Y here and an X here. So after I had just gotten done saying, you got to be careful when variables take on different roles than what you're used to, I had that mistake within my work. So obviously, be careful with the variables that you're using. M is taking on the role of Y, and T is taking on the role of X here. So... I uh, just wanted to change my notation a little bit there. And then to make the estimate for the temperature of the milk at time two, I would be putting two in place of the T within the equation of my line. And I would have to solve it for the M value. So you see I've added my five across, and then I've got 35 fourths times two. Uh, what you see right here in a non-calculator FRQ would receive full credit. You don't have to simplify. So it's definitely risky to try to do the math. It also wastes a little bit of time to try to do the math to work this out to 22.5. So leaving it with what I have highlighted right here is definitely uh, okay. And you don't have to take it to 22.5. Part C asks us to find the second derivative of M with respect to T. Now it does say to make sure that's in terms of M. So if I take the derivative of this, and I actually I distributed my one fourth in prior to taking the derivative. So if I distribute my one fourth into the 40 and into the negative M, I end up with this. It's just a little easier, in my opinion, to take the derivative from this form than in the form that we had back here. So the derivative of 10, the derivative of the left side of the equation, first off, is gonna generate the second derivative. The derivative of the 10 is zero, I can copy that negative one fourth into my derivative. It's just a constant. And then I need the derivative of M with respect to T right beside it. So again, being careful of 
recognizing what roles the variables are playing within your problem is significant when you take the second derivative. Now it does say to make sure that that second derivative is written in terms of m. My top line right here is definitely not that way. I have to substitute something that's in terms of m in place of dm dt. I could substitute what we started with back here. I just elected to substitute my simplified form of that. So here's my second derivative. And if you read the second part of part C, it says use the second derivative to determine whether the approximation from part B is an underestimate or an overestimate for the actual value of m of 2. Give a reason for your answer. You've probably encountered problems like this as you've practiced for the exam. Usually this is going to involve a concavity argument. They've had us take a second derivative, so they're kind of pushing us in that direction. So I wanted to consider what the concavity of this m of t function was going to be. So I realized this component here is always negative. This component here is going to be positive unless m exceeds 40, right? 1 fourth times 40 would be 10. 10 minus 10 would be 0. And then once I exceed 40, I would have this quantity within the grouping symbols here being negative. Now, they tell us in the problem statement that m of t is always going to be less than 40. So if I know that m is a value that's smaller than 40, I'm looking at a negative times a positive. Therefore, my second derivative is always negative. And because my second derivative is always negative, I know that m of t is concave down, right? A negative second derivative makes you concave down. And that places the tangent line from part b above m of t, resulting in an overestimate have a graph to support that here. So I just copied the slope field with the curve sketched into it from part A. And if I drew my tangent line in based at zero, because the tangent line is increasing at a constant rate and the graph due to it being concave down is, is, not, is decreasing at a decreasing rate, we have the curve being below the line at values of T to the right of zero. Last part of this is to use separation of variables to solve the differential equation. So to separate the variables, you would end up with something looking like this, right? Divide by this set of parentheses, uh, multiply the dt across to separate the variables. You then have to do the antiderivative on both sides. Technically, you need a little u substitution on the left-hand side. Uh, that is going to pick up a new factor of negative 1 on that left-hand antiderivative. You do end up with this for your left-hand antiderivative. Antiderivative on the right is a little easier. Again, make sure you realize you're doing your antiderivative with respect to t. I would have the tendency to see some people put one-fourth x in this spot rather than one-fourth t. So continue to pay attention to the roles those variables are playing. Now, you need to make sure you add the constant at this point. Uh, you don't have to add it on both sides. Technically, it should be added on both sides. But because we're going to solve this for the dependent variable m, the constants are all going to come together on the right side of the equation eventually. And so we can just add the constant on that right side one time only and pursue the rest of the solution. So I have the rest of my work up here. I need to solve for m. So you notice I divided both sides by negative 1. Now you notice I didn't change the sign of the plus c. I don't know if c is positive or negative. It very well could be negative, and if I'm subtracting a negative c, it turns it back into addition. So we don't typically associate sign changes with unknown constants when we're solving differential equations. I then exponentiated on both sides to get rid of my logarithm on the left. When I exponentiate on the right, e to a power can only ever be positive. So on this line right here, I still need my absolute values around the left side of the equation to maintain the fact that the left-hand side is also only ever positive. Now there's a, there's a sneaky little procedure that you've likely gone through when you've solved other differential equations that allows you to recognize that e to something plus a constant is really e to the something times e to the constant e to the constant is some new constant. And if we replace that e to the c portion of the right-hand side of the equation with an arbitrary constant a, that gives the right side of the equation the ability to become negative, and therefore we can drop the absolute values and allow the left-hand side of the equation that same ability. I do a little bit more algebra to solve for m. The algebra I did was to actually add the m to the right and then subtract this a e to the negative one-fourth t from the left. So I had it solved for m. Here's my general solution on this line right here. 
I do want to plug in my initial condition, which was when t is 0, m is 5. So I've got 5 in for m. I've got 0 in for t. And a times e to the 0 is just a. So if I have 40 minus a equals 5, I can add the a to the right-hand side. I can subtract the 5 from the 40. That gives me my value for a. And then here would be my specific solution.